I guess you've seen that sign enough times, haven't you? Any bar or club that sells liquor by the drink or any retail store beverages is sure to have it in a prominent place. Bud and Jack went in to buy a case of beer for a picnic. And right now, they think it's pretty unfair that they can't walk into a store like anyone else and buy liquor just because they're underage. Oh, that's me, incidentally, Tom Ullman. I'm a sports reporter on the city paper. The boys want me to take their money and buy their drinks for them. No deal. Maybe it'd be a good idea if I told them a little something about why that sign is in the window and why they should be glad it is there. For anybody who fools around with this, adult or minor, is playing with dynamite. I decided to tell these boys about Paul, Jim, and Tip. I guess you could say Paul started it all, but it wasn't all his fault, actually. You see, he was just too good a musician for his age. He played in dance bands with older fellows, and they taught him things he'd be better off not knowing. Jim had the richest father in town, and Tip, well, Tip was captain of the basketball team, all state the year before. They saw something funny in the way their friend Paul was acting as soon as he joined them. According to Paul, it's no fun drinking alone. He wants company. The other boys have never tasted liquor before, so they have to be dared into it. That first drink isn't very enjoyable, I can tell you. It burns your insides and it makes your eyes water. Tip refused the drink. He said he was in training and basketball meant too much to him. But that isn't good enough for his friends. He has to be a sport. You'd be surprised at how little it takes to get you tight that first time. That's true with adults, but at high school age, even though your mind seems mature, your body isn't, and alcohol is a violent narcotic. Well, that first night was the start. Paul, Jim, and Tip took to drinking together. Jim's father gave him plenty of money, and Jim kept them in liquor. boys were drinking more and more, depending on liquor to get them through the day. Even dates were no fun anymore without a bottle. Jim's date, Judy, had never tasted liquor before, but like dope addicts, one drinker can't stand the sight of somebody not drinking. And soon, Judy catches the spirit of the thing. The boys can't understand Judy, only two drinks and look at her. But it's really very simple. Tolerance for alcohol varies from person to person. Judy is one of those on whom it acts like a deadly poison. And on someone who has never used it before, the effect is a lot more violent. Jim himself is in no shape to drive. Right now he wishes he'd taken just one less drink. Just another victim of a drunk driver. One of the estimated 10 to 20,000 last year alone. Jim failed a few tests in high school after he started drinking, but he never failed a test as serious as this one. Jim went to jail with plenty of time to think. Well, what happened to the three boys after the accident? Paul was almost a complete alcoholic for a while, but then he became one of the youngest members of Alcoholics Anonymous, and now he has a chance to save himself. Jim never got over that accident. When he got out of jail, he went back to drinking and ended up on Skid Row, a hopeless derelict. Tip, the third boy, realized at the scene of the accident that he was playing in the wrong league. Right then, he made a vow never to touch a drop of liquor again, and he hasn't. How do I know? Because Tip is my son.
So that's why you see that sign in the window, and that's why every boy and girl should be glad that somebody put it there. Because alcohol is dynamite.